Welcome everyone. We're so grateful you could join us for this breakout session where we talk a little bit about USU's history of resiliency. My name is Travis Lish. I'm the current chair of the Utah State University Foundation Board and I'll be moderating the panel with our special guest speaker, uh, my good friend and yours, my, my personal mentor and, and the individual who got me back into Utah State and to serving um, the university, Dr. Ross Peterson. So welcome and thanks for joining us. So Ross, why don't you start off um, tonight by talking about how, how this time compares um, to other times in, in USU's history. Okay, well, thank you very much, Travis. I appreciate you doing this and appreciate uh, folks listening in and being with us on Founders Day and especially appreciate the people that are being honored. Uh, Utah State has a long history of service and being a land grant university, I think that's part of our heritage. But when given this assignment, uh, the first thing that came to mind is what I've witnessed in the past year or so about the students we have now. And uh, as President Cockett mentioned in the opening remarks, for me, it's been amazing to watch, uh, honestly, how good they are, <laughs> how good they are at, uh, with the mask, with the various tests, the many tests, and uh, now with getting the shots and uh, doing the best they can with online and watching the transition. And it's always been tough, I think, for them. And, and one thing I did at the, the last part of my class last fall and the first part this spring is I asked the students to just send me an essay of a couple pages or more on what their last year was like. And it hasn't been easy. It's, it's been pretty tough. And, and, you know, when you get my age, you can always say, well, it, you know, there wasn't a war. I mean, it was tough. But there, there's always been, I think, for each generation of students, a pretty tough period. But this one we've been through is fairly unique. And, uh, you know, to have things canceled totally. Uh, the only other time that happened, and I think if it's all right, Travis, I'll, I'll kind of focus on on about a hundred years ago uh, during World War I when we combined the, a pandemic and canceling and a lot of sicknesses and a lot of death with, uh, with a war. And I think uh, looking at USU during this time and trying to compare it to something, I really think uh, the World War I period is, is fairly unique. I wanna show uh, one of the things that we asked students to do this past year that is very comparable to 100 years ago is sacrifice. And, and you know, the, this is a, a picture of uh, someone plowing Old Main Hill uh, during World War I. Uh, the, the citizens were asked to do victory gardens. Uh, when, we, when we had that program, they were talking about of, of feeding other people. This is what was done during World War I, all over campus and all over the state and honestly, all over the nation. And I just thought this was a very, very unique kind of form of service. One of the other things that I think uh, came along during this time is President Peterson, E.G. Peterson, uh, as the, as the nation was gearing up for war, World War I started in Europe in 1914. The US didn't get involved until they declared war in April of 17, and we didn't send troops over till the fall of, of 1917. But in the meantime, we began uh, kind of preparing for it by offering the university as a place where soldiers could be trained where they could live and at the mean and you're also having school going right side by side and so consequently i want to show a couple other slides of uh, a thanksgiving dinner in 1918 and the, these well, it's are like thanksgiving dinner at the peterson house ross <laughs> yeah the old peterson house eg peterson <laughs> but uh these are these are student cadets uh, you know, with the flags in the background. 
and, and they're having a Thanksgiving dinner. And I think it's uh, on the, the basketball floor in the old smart gym. The old smart gym was right adjacent to the president's home, which used, used to be the alumni house. And now it's another thing. And then this is, uh, is also in that facility because you can see a running track up above and, and these are cots. And so the people lived there, they ate there, they trained on campus. And, and a few of them even were allowed to, uh, to take classes. Um, I, think, I think it's just a very, very interesting because the whole nation's going to war and they instituted the draft. So a lot of these guys that were in the student trying to training officer corps uh, you know, even though they were over 18, at any time they might have to leave as they needed more and more soldiers as the war progressed. The other thing, of course, that, uh, that happens during, uh, as, as a number of these students, and uh, it's interesting what a tremendous archive we have at Utah State on photographs of this period. But E.G. Peterson worked with the federal government and, and this is when they kind of built the quad and around the quad. Uh, this, uh, there's another building they built down by the Smart, Smart Gym, which was called the, the Domestic Arts Building. Then it changed to the Forestry Building and then it just got torn down and it's where the living, uh, learning living center is now. But, but that, the top floor was turned into, uh, into kind of a dorm because they weren't dorms on campus at this time. But this was, you know, they started to provide some dorms. There was also a home down at the base of Old Main Hill, uh, kind of in the southwest corner where you had quarantines. This last year, we took Lundstrom Hall and turn it into a place where students that were quarantined could go. But this, uh, this became a, uh, a quarantine house because uh, right during the middle of the war, and, and I started to build the, the building behind these troops is the Animal Husbandry Building. And then they're starting on what's now the geology building. It used to be called Plant Industry. And to the south of these troops is the uh, uh, the Ray West building, which is now English, but was originally for engineering. And so those buildings were built with federal dollars, with some assistance to the state during World War I. And so President Peterson was able to take advantage. Uh, uh, they didn't have a fund like the hardship fund that we, we've talked about, but at least for the students, the soldiers, this also, of course, provided a lot of jobs for people living in the area. That, uh, I mean, agriculture was pr premier because we were trying to feed the whole world. Uh, we being the United States, because everybody else was at war and we were late coming into the war. So it was a great time of agricultural prosperity. Uh, anything else on that, Travis, do you think? Uh, well, so, so yeah, Ross, so Talk a little bit about the role that the international influenza pandemic had on campus oh. and the students and, and also, you know, how the, the campus and the students benefited from that experience together oh, with, Thank you. with what you've talked about with the war. Okay, and maybe give a little bit of the timeline when Old Main was used as the hospital for the, the Spanish right. flu. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. If you'll notice on these cadets uh, that are out on the quad, you can't see behind the, the, the governor's actually out there. And you'll notice all those cadets have a, uh, have a mask on. Uh, they, this is during the pandemic because in 1918, as the war was winding to an end in Europe is when the influenza started breaking out. And, you know, it's one of these things, they called it the Spanish flu but one of the reasons it was called that was there was so much censorship of the press, uh, both in the United States and around the world, and Spain was neutral during the war. 
And so they were the first people that started to report the, the devastation of this flu. Now, it's estimated that worldwide, somewhere between 50 and 70 million, some people put it as many as 100 million, I don't know how they kept track, but died. And in the United States, it was just over 600,000, maybe. And, uh, and there were certainly more in Utah than have died during this, the, the COVID-19. But the amount of people that contracted the flu. Uh, and, and so the university gets caught in kind of an interesting <clears throat> transition because a lot of soldiers and the ones coming back from Europe and they came here often to be demobilized because some of their units were based out of here and, and they brought the flu with them. And, and so what happened is in, in a transition, uh, let me show you just a couple other slides of these soldiers as they came back. These, they're marching down, uh, down Main Street. If you look at Main Street closely, that's uh, of course, west of the taber tabernacle but you can see the trolley lines in the middle of the street. But if you look closely to the people on the east side of the street, they all have masks too. And my point in that is going back and looking at the history. And when I wrote the book on Cash, Cash County for the centennial of statehood in Utah, <clears throat> this wasn't politicized at all, <clears throat> excuse me, during, uh, during and after World War I. They, they did not have uh, vaccines. They really didn't have antibiotics yet. They didn't have you know, uh, penicillin or, or much of anything. And, and you just wrote it out or you, or you didn't write it out. And this epidemic uh, hit younger people more and then the elderly. And you know, if you take a trip through uh, most of the, of the uh, cemeteries, in this valley and around the nation, you see a lot of deaths in 1918, 19 and 20. And, and so, uh, but the, they talked about cleanliness, they talked about not having gatherings, and this is near the end of it, so people are gathered, but, uh, but they went through a similar process as we did. The only thing is they didn't have anybody working full speed to develop and get all the funding to, to make vaccines. The Pure Food and Drug Act had only been in for about a decade. And so consequently, uh, this, is a, this is an interesting time. And then, you know, they're celebrating coming the troops, coming, having the troops come home, but they're doing it during the middle of this pandemic. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I think I've got a slide of, of uh, in the basement of Old Main of, of some uh, Red Cross workers and nurses, as well as, uh, some uh, people who are preparing cots. The, the, uh, the third floor of Old Main on the north end became a, a hospital as well as part of the basement. And they actually in this one, uh, these, these volunteers or nurses are bringing food in to the building. In the old, old Main at the time, the north end down the basement was actually a dairy and the cattle were, were right outside the building. And so to, to, uh, you know, to, to feed people and bake and things like that, they turned this, the whole area into kitchens and, uh, and used the president's home and other facilities uh, you know, to do as much as they could to feed all these people, as well as buy and bring food in from downtown. But uh, that other slide is- Ross, let me ask you a question. So were the students still able to attend class um, while Maine was being used as a hospital? Were the students still able to persevere and continue to, to obtain their education at this time? Yeah, they didn't have anything online and they, uh, they weren't supposed <laughs> to gather. Uh, they honestly, they canceled the football season. One year, I think in 18, they played two games. In 19, they didn't play any. And the same was true for basketball and for dances and socials, the things when you go back and look at the yearbooks, but they did have classes. Now, because of the draft and the fact that uh, agriculture was doing so well, 
we had a we didn't have as many students as we had before the war, and uh, and that you know the student body is going to pick up numerically after the war, but it was uh, it it put a stress on, and this brought a lot of money into the university, of course, from the federal government to do it. This is actually where the main auditorium, the old main auditorium, if you see that pillar right in the center in the back, that was used as a, as a barracks for people uh, as they were being demobilized after the war. A lot of these young men were people who had, who had returned and were staying here in Logan to kind of go through a period of quarantine before they were allowed to go home. So we had the students that had that shared the campus with with those training for the war yeah we had them sharing it as a hospital all the while they were going to school right and and all the while president peterson is trying to balance all of this and use it to get additional fundings to to enhance the infrastructure of campus kind of a wild time to be a student at utah state university yeah and i and, I, and another thing about the students a lot of them uh you know, if they were waiting to be drafted or things like that, they just, they dropped out of school and went to work on building the buildings or went to work on one of the university farms. We were about five, six years into the expansion of extension through the Hatch Act. And, and so consequently, there were a lot of jobs out, out on the farms in the valleys too. And we had a heavy sugar beet industry and a lot of the things that were, were being produced here were, were needed, you know, nationwide. And, and so it was, you know, in a way, it's a, it's a great time of, for the university to kind of take a deep breath, perform a service, but for the individual students that were here, uh, it, it probably delayed their completion of the school. But what it did is it gave, and there's a piece of legislation passed in 1905 that took away a lot of, of our uh, classes and a lot of our programs. And he was able to get those back in the 20s as our university continued to uh, grow and expand after the war. The other thing I could mention quickly is you also had an election during the middle of this and you got President Wilson who doesn't, you know, you didn't have a national CDC or anything like that. And he just, he like most of the politicians said, oh, this is just like a cold, just like a flu, it'll go away, you know, just, just tough it out. And he was trying to get us into the League of Nations and, uh, and then, it, then they moved from that into election. So it was a tough time, but it was a good time. So I appreciate your time and uh, uh, hope to see you all. And okay, Travis. Okay, everybody, you should be receiving a prompt. Our, our meeting's going to promptly end right here. Um, and so we appreciate you joining us for the breakout session. To return the main event, close this webinar by clicking the red leave button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen and you can return to the main event page, which should be in a different window on your computer. If you have any issues and your event page is closed, go to usucelebration.com. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, we appreciate talking about how Aggies have been resilient over time and look forward to continue to see uh, how they've been resilient throughout this year and thank you again for joining us.